Uh, first up, though, let's talk about the latest nanny statism from our supposedly Conservative government. George Osborne uh, has been speaking out about uh, how we should be rejecting nanny state objections to things like a ban on smoking and even taxing orange juice more highly because it's full of sugar. So it's basically as bad as drinking a Coca-Cola. Let's talk to Maxwell Marlow, who's Director of Research at the Free Market Think Tank, the Adam Smith Institute. Good morning to you, Maxwell. Good morning, Good morning, Julia. How are you? I'm very well indeed, but I'm increasingly, increasingly anti-nanny state. I haven't been really quite a nanny statist in my time on, on things like smoking. Um, um, there was a time, and I would definitely say, yeah, ban smoking, absolutely. I rather felt that banning smoking in offices, I used to sit in offices at six in the morning with someone you know, smoking next to me, being able to go to a restaurant or a bar and not having to be surrounded by smoke, I have to say, I really rather like, thank you very much. But it seems to me that there is always an urge to go further and further and further, and it doesn't matter what it is if people don't like something other people do they think they've got a right to control it and here we are with George Osborne absolutely and uh, there are some great photos floating around this morning on Twitter of George Osborne happily smoking away on it on, on all the cigarettes I believe Petronella Wyatt even tweeted about it um, and how he would you know just consume cigarettes at a vociferous rate when he was uh, out in Italy um, but I think it does speak to a wider point and that point is, of course, the nanny state is back with a passion and it's not going to go anywhere, especially under Labour further down the line. Um, if he's concerned about smoking, and I think it's right that people are, uh, I believe it's 12 percent of people do smoke in the UK. It, it, you know, a cigarette contains over 80 different carcinogens and toxic chemicals when you smoke it. We know that it, I think it is right that we go towards a smoke free future. Yeah. And there are ways to do it, Julia, as we know. Vaping is very good. Snooze is very good. Nicotine pouches are very good. And what I mean, uh, something your listeners and uh, viewers may not know is that Sweden, uh, which has taken these kind of tobacco harm reduction measures, is the first country in the world to be smoke free, i.e. less than 5% of the population smoke. Yeah, I love and this phrase, smoke free. You're not smoke free, 5% of the population. But it is, as you say, it is possible to take the numbers down. New Zealand gone down a very different yeah. route. This whole, you know, plain packaging and no evidence that makes particular difference at all um but also this idea of raising the age at which you can start smoking so we raised it from 16 to 18 it's going to go up every year basically eventually only if you're 90 you're going to be able to buy cigarettes but we know what happens then it's an addiction people then turn to the black market i mean i'm always amazed that anybody can afford to smoke i don't care how much you're earning for cigarettes now i mean how much are they a packet i mean most of it is tax now but 14 15 16 quid something like that it's, it's like it's like you're asking me what a pint of milk is. I'm I'm not too sure given Don't, current uh, rates and given inflation, it's going up as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they, they cost but, a huge amount but, of money. But a lot of them people are buying them on the black market anyway. We know it's an addiction. We know it's absolutely. also an addiction that largely starts in childhood. I'm not a fan of vaping at all, other than as something for pe stopping people giving up smoking. But again. It's none of mm. my business, and I, I don't want kids vaping, and I'm not entirely sure we should have, you know, sort of bubblegum flavours and pink sparkly vapes to encourage uh, teenage girls to take up vaping well, when they're giving up smoking. If I can stop you there, Julia, on, on, on the flavours debate, it's really important about the flavours. The reason we have these flavours is because adults also like flavours, and, you know, the reason George Osborne wants to go for things like orange juice is because the things taste nice, and it's not really targeted directly at children i agree there is concern and the main thing we have to stop is you know uh shops selling vapes to uh to, to children and the law is already very clear on this it's just we do not have the enforcement mechanisms yeah. to crack down on people who are you know breaking the law children yeah. should not be vaping of course and the the data which shows you know for people who haven't smoked before um you know who take a vaping is very very low it's mainly yeah. a smoking cessation aid and that's why the NHS has done something really brilliant, which has shocked me completely, um, in you know giving vaping starter kits to heavy smokers because the science is crystal clear. Yeah. Vaping is 95% safer than smoking, and it stops people from yeah. you know those terrible. I mean, I'm, I'm of the view that people could afford to buy those vaping kits themselves. I'm not entirely sure it's a good use of my... Of I know it yeah, saves yeah. the money, NHS long run, but so would so would those people just buying that stuff themselves. Or, hey, go, we'll give you a free kit, and if you decide to keep on with it, can you pay us the 30 quid back or whatever it is? I think would be a reasonable yeah. thing. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old-fashioned like that. People got personal responsibility. But the key thing here is, isn't it, it, it's just this idea that I don't like something or I can't give it up. So, you know, I find it difficult to be around chocolate and not eat it, but I'm not asking people to ban 
and chocolate. And one of the reasons I stopped being sort of quite the United States, I think I started off my own years, was, you know, they, you think, oh, well, yeah, they're coming for stuff that I don't do. And then they start coming for stuff that I do, you know, coming for, you know, the cake and the chocolate and, and, the, and the wine mm. and, and the sort of the, the judging. There's a really puritanical streak in a lot of the, the public health attitudes of many of the people in charge, whether it's civil servants, politicians, or indeed, the, you know, the public health people who, you know, the ones who wanted to keep us in masks for till the end of time uh, because we might catch a cold. Um, these people, I don't think, live the sort of same full lives as the rest of us, put it that way. I think they do, actually. It's just, you know, I think, I, have, I think you know, uh, if you go to the Department of Health and you have a breakfast there, for example, they will serve you orange juice and the, <laughs> they will have a biscuit tin, you know. I think this sort of... And Boris Johnson very famously was having his cake in Downing Street. This is, of course, just hypocrisy, and it's hypocrisy all the way down Whitehall, yeah. all throughout Parliament, and it speaks very unfortunately towards the mindset of our our political yeah. class. It's kind of the opposite of Marie Antoinette. It's not let them eat cake; it's let us eat cake. Uh, but 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 not you, uh, Max Mal Marlow from the Ellis Smith Institute. Thank you so much. Eight forty-three is the time. This is Talk Breakfast.